Hello everyone and welcome to the final video in the Temtem 1.0 guide series. In this video, we'll be going over what to expect from 1.0 and specifically the competitive changes that won't be coming out for another month as the other stuff we'll be able to see tomorrow. So I hope everyone's enjoyed this series. It's been a ton of fun to make and I hope it's helped you guys out. So I, and I hope you all enjoy the archipelago in 1.0. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. So what we're looking at here is the Golden Week update for the competitive side of things. The Golden Week update was something Prima did to keep us interested in 1.0 and give us a look into what we can expect. For each working day, we got a new update on what we could expect on different things coming for 1.0. Day two was the competitive scene and the approach to balance changes. So this is what we're going to mainly focus on. I'm also going to go through the Tamer's Paradise later in the video. So the big first big thing coming out of this update was the announcement of Temtem Showdown. So for anyone that's played Pokemon Showdown, you kind of get what it's going to be about. It's an in-game showdown calculator. So basically what that'll allow you to do is create a team and just use it on the ladder without having to train it or PV train it or anything like that. It is going to just be ready to use. So it's a fantastic thing to add to the game. People always complain that the biggest problem with Temtem was the grind, especially the grind just to try things out. Even if you wanted to try it a Temtem in ladder, you usually had to level it and TV train it so that you could still just try it out in ladder, which was always a pain for people. So this is a huge update. I mean, I remember when I seen this, I was stoked. I never expected them to release a showdown in the game, but it's absolutely fantastic that they did, and it looks like it's going to be awesome. And one final thing they posted is that even though the ranked ladder will use showdown teams, you can still use your regular team if you want to use your Lumas or your other perfect tens that you already have. The next thing, big thing in the competitive update was ranked version 2. Again, showdown and ranked version 2 will be coming out later. And it won't be on 1.0 drop. We don't know exactly how long, uh, but we're hoping it won't be too long after 1.0 drops and we'll get this stuff. So ranked version 2 will bring out about a lot of changes to the rank system. Uh, first of which being that the format will be divided into seasons. The rank seasons will be divided into predetermined amount of times for each season. And the idea with these seasons is there's going to be a balance patch at the beginning of each season. And then the meta will remain untouched for the most part going through that season. So it can all be contained. And then of course once that season ends you'll get your new uh, balance patch at the end of it. Another thing with the seasons is the TMR is going to be reset at the end of each season. So hopefully that will fix any issues with the K that we've had in the past. Uh, or not having it, people just sitting at the top of the ladder. With seasons and everyone getting a new TMR at the end of the season, it just gives you something to climb for at the beginning of each season. Another thing is they're changing some of the way TMR works. Uh, they're hoping to increase TMR gains across the board just so that a high level players will be, you know, much higher in TMR than uh, lower players in the in the ranking system. Right now, it's pretty squished and everyone is pretty close together. But it can also mean that a higher player gets matched up against someone at a much lower TMR, and that player loses a lot of TMR if they do happen to lose that game. Which is also something they're going to try and adjust: how much TMR you lose when matched against someone much lower than you. Because like right now it is pretty, you lose a lot of TMR in those cases. They're also going to make TMR not visible in the update. It's going to be more, act like an MMR of other games. It's going to be in the background just for matchmaking. And they're going to add ranks in the game that'll replace the visible TMR. So think like uh, flat, gold, silver from other games. And there'll also be a legend uh, rank which will be like your challenger or le legend in hearthstone that'll be around the top one percent player uh so that's going to be the big thing that people are going to look for also in legend it will tell you what rank you are in legend so let's say there's 200 people in legend then you'll be ranked from one to 200 and a couple final things uh you will be able to get feathers uh which we'll go over in tamer's paradise but they are a currency to buy uh, new items and 
we're hoping you can buy like leveling aids and stuff like that with them. Uh, there's also going to be seasonal rewards. So at the end of your season, depending on how good you do, you'll get exclusive cosmetic rewards, which is always something I'm super f uh, for. Something that is exclusive for PvP players is something really cool to flex with. Uh, the next thing here is the dedicated balance team. During early access, Primo was pretty forward and upfront about the fact that they haven't been able to have a dedicated balance team as getting the game out has been more important, which is completely understandable. So in 1.0, they are hoping to dedicate a few of their members specifically to balance, which is something that the players have wanted for a long time, but unfortunately with early access and the game having to be released, wasn't able to be done. Here, though, we, now that they have a dedicated balance team, they should be able to make some more robust changes and hopefully really dig into what needs to be done to get the game to a balanced state. They're also looking at the idea of having community members help with the balance update. So that's not something that's going to be confirmed, but it's going to be something that they're going to look at as an option for some extra input from some, from some top-level community members. And the last thing here, which is absolutely fantastic, is the plan for Primo Run tournaments. For these tournaments, they hired a new esports manager, Yaluna, who has been running tournaments in Temtem since Alpha started. She was a member of the Archipelago Battle Committee along with myself. We ran a couple Alpha tournaments, and then she went on to run some Fellow Tamer circuits after the fact. So that's going to be a really exciting thing for Temtem fans. Tournaments in the past have only been community ran, and while they have been awesome and really well done, there is a limit to what you can do with a community run tournament. With a Creamer run tournament, they can do qualifying points, they can do invitationals, they are hoping to do cash prizes, and maybe even some on-site tournaments if they have the access to do that. So this is going to be really cool. Uh, we don't know exactly how that's going to shake up yet, Yaluna has been very active in the competitive Discord, trying to find ways to make this run and see what players would like to see in these tournaments. Yeah, guys, that's basically it for the competitive update on the game. Uh, we'll see. Obviously, this came out a while ago, and it's not coming out with 1.0, so we could see some changes from what is seen here. But this is a basic outline and what we have to work with right now. Uh, the final thing that they've added is a TV blender that will basically make it easier to add fruits to your temtem uh, through tvs so that's going to be really cool i believe the idea will be that you can just kind of go to the blender and input the tvs you want and it'll use the fruits that you have to make that happen or something similar to that but either way that's going to be an awesome change i can't wait to see it the final thing we're going to look at in this video is the tamers paradise update so this is an update coming to 1.0. That'll be the Endgame Island. Uh, it's always been referred to as the Endgame Island, and we never really had much info on it. So we weren't really sure what to expect, but this is what we're going to get, and it looks fantastic so far. So this is the Tamer's Paradise, and this is where we're going to spend the feathers that we've been getting, as well as able to participate in some new activities to gain feathers and other rewards. So mainly I just want to go over the new activities and what we're going to be able to purchase with feathers. So we're just going to go down through these really quickly. Uh, first off, you have the Arc Tamers activity. So you'll be able to complete the Arc Tamers side quest. Uh, then you'll be, they'll all be in this new facility and you'll rematch them on a weekly basis. So these rematches are done with one team and in a consecutive manner. So you can't change your team at all while doing it. The only difference is you will be healed between each battle. Uh, funny enough, I didn't really put this together, but this almost reminds me of like an Elite Four kind of thing uh, with the Arc Tamers. And once you complete it, you get your weekly reward. The next mode is a draft mode. So this for this mode, you'll be creating a new team from scratch based on what the system gives you. You will be presented with four Tem choices and four gear choices. Once you make your choice, you'll be presented it again and again until you have a, until you have four tem tem in a geared squad once you have drafted your team you will compete against an ai rival that has done the same thing and you will go until you lose so it's very similar to like draft in hearthstone 
uh, where you get a selection of cards, pick them, and build your deck. It's going to be very similar to that. So that's going to be a really neat idea and something that's going to be a lot of fun to play around with. Next up is the tower. So for the tower, it's basically the same as draft mode. However, you will actually use your own Temtem squad for this. Uh, you will face an increasingly, uh, increasingly more difficult enemies and battling them until you lose. Uh, the only difference is there will be some banned Temtem that will change about on a weekly basis. So you'll have to change your team around whatever the banned Temtem will. Next up, we have the wild. Another infinite battle scenario. However, this one will be with wild Temtem. Basically, you will have them constantly swarm you as you are trying to defeat them and defeat as many as you can. You will be able to use some items in these modes, but uh, it will be limited. And you also get some bonuses that will take effect that will be changing out on a weekly basis. The next one is Vogue Light, and this may be the one I'm most excited for. So basically, it works like a Vogue Light game where you are going in through an ever changing dungeon and you pick one starter Temtem and you get new Temtem and items along the way. And you just basically see how far you can go in through the dungeon. The final activity for this is a new kind of layer. So four layers, I went over it briefly in one of the previous videos, but this will be a new take on it. So for these layers, you will work in a party of two and go through the layers trying to obtain an egg of a specific breed of Temtem you're looking for. During this, you'll be able to modify basically everything about the layer to make it more difficult. But if you make it more difficult, you will get a better egg at the end being SVs, egg moves, and maybe even better Luma odds. So this is a pretty interesting take on the layer system, and I actually think this activity will be really cool to do. So how you get into these activities is you use a token. You will be given a token for each of these activities at the beginning of the week, and you can then do your one activity a week and then be done with it if you want. However, if you would like to continue doing these activities, you can definitely buy new tokens with Pansons and get the rewards. It's really up to you if you enjoy the activities, you can buy more tokens and try and get new rewards and convert your Pansons into rewards. But again, you will be given a free pass into each activity once a week, so that'll be kind of part of your weekly routine in Temtem. The last thing we're going to go over is the feather system and what you are able to buy with it. So feathers you get from a bunch of different activities in Temtem, the kudos, PvP, through the Tamer's Paradise, things like that. But what can you actually buy with them? Well, they're actually changing it so that radars are going to be purchased by feathers. You'll be able to pick which radars you get, which also means that you can get now 5% and 10% radars again, as it's going to be your choice and it's not going to feel bad when you get a 5% radar from, from Dojo Rebattles. So for this, that's going to be the first thing you're going to be able to buy. Next up, we have Telemore Hotfixes, which is going to be awesome. You're going to be able to buy specific hotfixes for what you're able to, for what you need for your Luma. So that's a huge change. Next thing you'll be able to buy is Telemore Hacks and Bugs. Uh, this would be mainly for if you're using it for your mythical Temtem. So that's going to be really cool. Uh, and also, this is the introduction of Telemore Bugs, which will subtract from your SV rather than add. Some of you may be thinking, well, why would you want to subtract from an SV if you want a perfect SV Temtem? There are certain Temtem that want to hit a specific SV rating that is below 50. For example, there is Deceit or Nagas, which basically acts like Trick Room from Pokemon. If you are the slowest Temtem on the field, you will actually go first. So in that way, having certain speed breakpoints at a lower point will actually be very beneficial because you can always go before the Nagais in the Seat or for example. Uh, the next item will be the Essences. So that is another thing on the candies, fruits, and smoothies, except Essences add 100 of each stat, which is double of what smoothies did. So just making it a bit easier to catch up. Next up is the Learning Aid Plus. This works like Learning Aid, which was a double EXP boost for half an hour. The Learning Aid Plus will boost your Temtem's EXP gains by three times for 60 minutes. On top of the changes to leveling experience and how much you get, this should make leveling so much quicker. It's going to be a fantastic change. And finally, a new item that are Soulbinders. What a Soulbinder allows you to do is 
get a Luma that is not your original OT, um, original Tamer ID, and you are able to use hotfixes on it as if it was your own. However, with a Soul Binder, you are no longer allowed to trade it or breed it after you do that. So if you're using it, uh, if you want to get a perfect Luma, make sure you use all the fertility, breed it out, and then you can Soul Bind it. It becomes your own, and you can use hotfixes on it so that you're able to get the perfect Luma you've always wanted. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this guide series. It was a lot of fun to make, and I hope it helps you guys through your journey in the archipelago. If you like the videos, make sure to subscribe to see any other future videos that I will be putting out, as well as liking the video as that helps more people see it. I'd also love to hear your comments, questions, or concerns about the video or anything, any other video I've done. And if you ever want me to make a video about a specific topic, let me know. And if I have time, I'll make sure to do it. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. I hope you enjoyed the series. And I hope you all enjoy exploring the archipelago with me in 1.0. Enjoy. Peace.